Success! Some people define success as being a high-powered CEO. Some people define success as having a loving family. Some people define success as eating an entire 12-inch chicken parmesan sub in one sitting. In this video, I will go over the key strategies needed to become the most successful person you could possibly imagine. Get ready for your next family function, because bitch, you're arriving smug as hell. Step one. <coughs> the key to being successful is in how you define success. If to you the only version of success is owning a yacht, then you are limiting your potential for success. If you consider not smelling like burning garbage and kitty litter successful, then bitch, you're instantly a glowing success. Hopefully. One of my personal key points of success is finishing an entire Delicio Deluxe Rise and Crust Pizza. As soon as I take that last salty, filthy bite, I am not only filled with nausea, but I am filled with an overwhelming sense of triumph. If you consider having clean sheets that aren't drenched in sleep sweat as a point of success, then bitch suddenly you're a successful fresh bitch. Though if that is your definition, I am a failure to you. Redefine your meaning of success and suddenly you will be so full of smug self-satisfaction that everyone you know will despise you and there is no better feeling. Step two, use successful words. Integrating, symbiotic, Dow Jones, pie charts, highway 401, brand, crest white strips, interfacing, health insurance. I do not know what any of those mean. But it doesn't matter. I will pepper them into every conversation and leave the conversee blown away by my obvious and glaring successful demeanor. Example! A person asks, hey, is that guacamole? My answer, it is an actualization of corporate avocado distribution mush. Step three, not comparing. It's easy to look at the beautiful, popular girl in grade five and, and be like, God damn it, Natalie! You have the thickest, most beautiful braid I've ever seen, and it makes me want to curl into a ball and die because my braid is so thin and pathetic and I'm a mild shell of a human compared to you. No. Is Natalie a boss bitch? Of course. There's no denying that. Look at her fucking braid, for God's sakes. But you're a boss bitch too, Lilbelia. You are. Yes, maybe you don't have a braid on par with Jasmine from Aladdin, but you can make really good jam. You can mold Play-Doh into an extremely realistic naked female body. You, you can sing complicated like a fat no-name brand Avril Lavigne. Uh. Natalie is a, is a cool, sensual queen with the braid of an angel. Of course. But, but that doesn't take away from you being a cool lols bitch with a godly amount of leg hair. Step four. Celebrate all your victories and others. Nothing is less conducive to success than rooting for someone else's failure, no matter who it is. When Kim Kardashian and Kanye West were on the cover of Vogue and Buffy the Vampire Slayer complained about it, did it get her the cover of Vogue? No, bitch. Buffy stayed home. Complaining about someone else's success is saying they have what I should have, but if you want it, then go and get it. And if someone else gets it, then, then celebrate that. Because if it's possible for them, then it's possible for you. <coughs> and what you put out is, is what you get back. So if you're rooting for or celebrating someone else's failure, you're really causing your own. So to sum up, Buffy, yes, I am still rooting for your Vogue cover with Spike. Success is in how you look at it. It does not have one version. It does not have one path. It does not have one timeline. Today, I am going to eat an entire pizza while having a bubble bath. And while I do, I will know that I am having a dynamic e-business, customer service, pie chart synergy moment.